hey, I know it's bad that they lost, but hey, we have Dylan Larkin, and isn't he just amazing? And we kept it close with one of the best teams in the league, and Derek Shalowski, he's going to be a, a great defenseman in this league. You look at the juniors and the minors, Philip Zadina, Joe Valeno, we have players, and... Maybe maybe Steve Eiserman might come back at the end of the year and 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 just 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 look at just look just look at how 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 promising the wings are. <laughs> wings lose six to four to the Calgary Flame. Oh oh, Jacob, we need to be optimistic. We need to be patient. I've even said that. You gave up four separate leads in one game, and none of those goals were good that you gave up. This, 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 this team. Hey, Danny DeKaiser's back in the lineup. That's good. I. That means we have more veteran presence on a team that has tons of veteran presence already. Now we can make some changes to the lineup, make it a better lineup. Who gets scratched? Philip Ronick, who was amazing in all the games he was in. And, 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 okay, Chalowski goes out and has one stinker of a game. I love Chalowski. I defend him. I'm not going to defend him on that one. This was not Chalowski's best game. This might have been one of his worst. But the first time he gives away the puck a couple times, Blaschel in the lineup looks like he's going to scratch Dennis Chalowski. What is it with his team getting in the way of itself? Oh, but Jacob, we have to have better in presence. We can make a playoff push. What universe are you in that you think the Wings are going to be competitive this season? And even if you thought, in what universe do you believe that Jonathan Erickson is going to be a better defenseman Today, tomorrow, and a week down, down the line, then Philip Pronik or Janice Schlowski. I don't get it. You know, everyone makes fun of the Edmonton Oilers. Why? Because Connor McDavid is scoring like half of their goals or assisting on half of their goals. It's ridiculous. Connor McDavid is just pulling this team on his back. The Oilers' Zamboni broke down and they had to get people to push it, which is just a metaphor for the entire Oilers' season. But the Wings do not get nearly as much flag for a very similar situation. I would love to know how many goals Larkin has factored in. This, this man, this, 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 this. Dylan Larkin is putting this team on his back. He, every single game, he gives this team a chance to win. And the team, from the vets, to even the rookies in this game, to the coaching, to the management, is just not helping him. The amazing Athens C. Larkin Mantha line that we had last game, you know, following the footsteps of Boston and Toronto and Colorado, of putting your best players on the top line, crazy idea, I know. It scored a couple of goals and Blaschel disbanded it immediately. Listen, if you look on paper, if you look in the minors, go to catfriendly.com, see what the wings have. Hey, turns out we're not actually in that bad of a cap situation. Look at hockey reference, look at the look at elite prospects, look at the guys we have in the minors, in the juniors, the goaltending prospects, everything we have. It looks like the Wings should be in an amazing rebuilding mode for the next couple years. I said it on this show that I think the Wings should be able to contend for a playoff spot next year. And all these optimistic signs keep pointing to me and saying, Jacob, Jacob, don't worry. This season is just going to be frustrating, but everything else can be okay. But what I see with my eyes when I watch this team is gives me no faith that this team is going to use it. I, I, I have a question. What veteran defenseman do you think the Wings are going to sign this season to way too much money for way too much term to fill the role that a, that a rookie defenseman could do better? You know who I think? Ron Hainsey. Yes, Ron Hainsey. Top pair defenseman on the Leafs. Um, who isn't really a top pair defenseman, but he just kind of has to be because Mike Babcock. Ron Hainsey. Ken Allen's going to go out and say... You know, that guy, he has experience, he won a cup on the Penguins, um, and he's a defenseman, and we need that, that, that veteran presence. Despite the fact that we have Chalowski, Hronik, Shulak, Higgins is sometimes in there, Big Isaac, we have so many possible defensemen we could put in next year, but I have no faith in this team to let the rebuild happen. And I'm just talking about the defense. We're, let's not even get onto the tire fire that is our forward situation. Blashill just, I mean, the Blashill blunder, it's famous among Wings fans. 
The minute he has any kind of line set up, the minute they make one mistake, he destroys the line. What's? How do you expect the players to be able to develop together? When? How do you spell these players to be able to make good lines together when you ch change it every day? What, what, what astounds me about the Wings' obsession with veterans on this team? Veterans who aren't very good. Listen, I'm not saying that just because a player is old, it means he's bad. Look at Patrick Marlowe on Leaf. Look at Joe Thornton on the Sharks. Veterans, amazing. But what do they have in common? They produce. And that's not even, and the worst part is I'm, I love some of these players on the teams that I think I should maybe, we should maybe get rid of. Darren Helm, I really do love Darren Helm a lot. Glenn Denning, I think is a, one of the best fourth line centers in the league, but he's being played third line center and he's not amazing at it. So many players on this team I think, I think I would love to have around, but we're just not the same team we were in 2015. And that doesn't mean that I don't care anymore. Look at this. Look at this. I don't know if you can see that. I, I made all the notes for all the goals in this game. It's pretty long. I it go into detail. But what's the point? What does any of this matter anymore? I said earlier when talking about the tank, it doesn't matter if you win or lose. It matters how you win and how you lose. Sure, this was a vital lack of two points in the standings if you're part of Team Tank. But the way we lost it is a symptom of all the problems that just the, the disease this organization has. Dennis Klauski had two awful turnovers, both of which led to Flames goals. But who is developing Dennis Klauski? The amount of goals this team gives up when one player has the puck, like for example, uh, Ryan or whatever, on the Flames for the 5-4 goal that would end up being the game winner. The amount of players, the amount of, t the amount of goals that we give up where three guys, four guys in the end are looking at one player and no one's on the, the streaking winger like Sam Bennett in this case is a ridiculous because this team should be experienced. Oh, you know, we have all these young players. They're going to make young, young mistakes. Let me tell you the players, on the, the players who are on the ice for the game winning goal. Okay, it looks like it was Darren Helm who didn't back check enough. Good veteran player. He was one he's one of the few players left on the Wings roster who won the Cup 2008. Luke Lundenning, enough said. Jonathan Erickson. Jonathan Erickson, he's been in for a while. Nick Jensen, we keep thinking about as about as him like as young just because we have so few young defensemen on this roster. He's 28. And look, I want to talk about Dylan Larkin just lighting up the flames. If I didn't care about the long-term success of this team, I would just be, every single video would just be me and going, oh, Dylan Larkin, oh, he's just so good. And don't get me wrong, I do think Dylan Larkin is great, and I think he's underrated in this league. But Dylan Larkin is one player on this team, and the, the, it doesn't matter how much he wants to do, and I do truly think he wants to just take this team on his back and carry it to the playoffs. He's one guy, there's 19 others who could possibly lend a hand, and as I said in one of the earlier videos, if you don't eat your meat, you can't have any pudding. Which is why I, 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 I'm gonna introduce a new segment. It's called the Dylan Larkin segment. So we're gonna talk about the Red Wings uh, game when they deserve it, which, which last game on Friday night, they did not deserve it. And then we're gonna talk about Dylan Larkin segment, where he just, just, just gets a chance he just gets a chance on his own just to be just to be praised. So I just had the Red Wing segment where I talked about how they are shite. Let's talk about the Dylan Larkin segment. Have, 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 I can't talk today. I can't. This team, all, I've been trying to be optimistic in all the videos. A common theme has me been saying we need to be patient this year. And it's just been building up and building up and building up this year, you know. Let's talk about Dylan Larkin. How about that? For this segment, we'll be talking about Dylan Larkin's two goals in this game because, you know, well, I've already been ranting f for a while and I don't want to keep you here all night. The After all, the Canucks game is starting up soon and I'm afraid it might not be up in time. Let's talk about the, Dylan Larkin's two goals. The game is tied in second. Second. The game is tied in second. It's the later half of the second. Mike Green, an actual good vet, finds Larkin with a pretty good pass behind in the Flames' red line. He just skates forward and he scores on will. Uh, he scores on will, turning and shooting, and it gets tipped by Giordano, but that kind of shot is not a fluke. Just bam, into the net. Larkin, when he wants to score, he scores. 
to one. Let's talk about Larkin's other goal. This is one of the many, 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 up to, I should have said fine sauce, why didn't I say fine sauce? But like a fine sauce, pass, wine, whatever. Up to Gus Nyquist. He's in all alone, and Gus Nyquist has been playing with Dylan Larkin for long enough that he knows that he is a better shot just giving the puck. Crazy pass back to the streaking Dylan Larkin, who has a wide open net, shoots it in. Dylan Larkin scores 4 3. Let's not talk about the rest of the game where uh, 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 we give up a shorthanded goal to make it 4 4. And as I said earlier, we. Um, we have three guys watching one, 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 one flames forward, uh, and the only person watching the uh, the, the winger is Darren Helm, who uh, refused. Who I guess he just like unplugged the Xbox controller, and then they scored five four, and then TJ Brody made it made it six five. <sighs> this team is going to kill me. Listen, listen. Our next game is tonight against the Vancouver Canucks. The Vancouver Canucks are in a dogfight, fighting for every point they can get their hands on in the West. There are three spots open in the, in the West, only two of them if you're a Pacific team. So every game you play against a team from the Pacific, every game you play against a Western team, unless you're talking about Chicago or LA, is vital. So expect the Canucks to come out playing like demons in this game. The Wings are on the second leg of their Western Canada trip. All I want to see, all I want to see is just a, a better effort, I'll say. And it looks like Dennis Schlowski is going to be scratched in this game. So I'll see you after that game. And one day, one day, the Wings will be back to the glory of the former empire. I am Jacob. I am losing my mind. I will see you next time.